Hello again, we're back in the car. It's uh, Thursday morning. To be honest, it's middle of the night for me. It's 20 past 10. Uh, cinema day again. It's my third cinema visit in a week. I'm becoming quite the cinephile. Uh, yeah, it's a few films I've just wanted to see. Not sort of big, you know, must see these films, but things I was just curious about. And I had the time, so I thought, yeah, I'll go along and see them. That was Ambulance and the Nan movie. And today we've got the latest from Sony's um, deal, as it were, with Marvel. This is Morbius, the much delayed Morbius, starring Jared Leto. Trailers look okay. Um, this is one of those characters that I'm familiar with from the 70s comics. Uh, I'll be, I'm sort of interested to see what they do with him, but being Sony, flying solo without Marvel's guiding hand, I'm not really expecting a lot. The reviews have come out this morning and I've had a quick look at some of them and they're pretty abysmal. Uh, however, they were abysmal for the Nan movie as well and I sort of enjoyed that, so um, I'll be the judge. Right, I'm off to see Morbius. I'm going to grab a quick bit of brekkie on the way and I shall report when I return from the cinema. Hello. Um, I just came back on. Uh, on my way to the cinema and just to show you my breakfast. My breakfast of choice if I go out early in the morning it's Greg's special. Greg's do these um, very nice breakfast deal. Just a little, just enough. It's not a big baguette because I don't really want that. But you can get for two pound forty, you'll get a lovely bacon roll. Uh, nice big, nice quite thick chunks of bacon in a nice white roll, and your hot drink of choice, tea or coffee. Um, I went for a tea uh, because I'm probably going to grab a coffee at the cinema. Uh, £2.40, that's not a bad little breakfast snack. It's something I quite look forward to if I'm going out somewhere early in the morning. And for the cinema, I bought myself a little packet of chocolate and yoghurt uh, raisin mix. Seriously tasty treats, uh, which I shall sit and munch during um, Morbius. So that's my breakfast. My breakfast tip for you all, get yourself down to Greg's. Get yourself a £2.40 bacon roll, if you're not a veg or vegan, and a nice hot drink. Bye. <laughs> Two hours later. Hello, right, I'm back from Morbius. Um, it's now the afternoon. I've seen the film. I digested it. Uh, Morbius stars Jared Leto, Matt Smith, uh, Jared Harris, and is directed by David Espanola. And it's the latest Sony attempt to capitalise on the Spider-Verse that they have the rights to. I mean, it's, it's an odd situation, as you probably know years ago. Uh, Marvel sold the rights to certain characters, including Spider-Man, to Sony, who did the first... Marvel uh, did the first films based on Spider-Man. Along with those rights came lots of other subsidiary characters, Craven the Hunter, um, Morbius, and various other uh, villain figures, the sort of the Marvel uh, Spider-Man's rogues gallery, if you like. Um, Sony now working with Marvel to do the superior Tom Holland Spider-Man films, but they've still got the rights to other characters. Venom, for example, is another example. They've done the two Venom films, which I abhor. Um, and now we've got Morbius. Now, I remember Morbius, as I said, from the comics in the 70s. I recently read his origin story in a Marvel Spider-Man Treasury edition that I picked up on eBay. And I remember him appearing and, you know, I don't know a lot about his background and things, but I just remember him being in the Spider-Man universe. But now, of course, Sony have still got the rights to certain characters and they still seem to be pressing ahead with these projects based on these other characters that have some tangential connection to Spider-Man with references to Spider-Man and the Spider-Man universe um, that's been brought to life much better, much more accomplished style by Marvel. Um, so now we've got Morbius. It's arrived finally three years nearly after it finished filming. Uh, the trailers look quite interesting. I thought, okay, this looks, has potential. Uh, Morbius in the shots that we saw looked suitably vampiric. He looked a bit like he does in the comics. I was intrigued to see Matt Smith in the cast. I thought, well, this might, be okay. Uh, but then there were rumours last month that um, certain things had been taken out and certain adjustments made and 
Perhaps Sony were looking for a more of a standalone film. I don't know if that's necessarily the case now, having seen it, because there are references and callbacks to things. Uh, but no, ultimately, it's not a very good film. It's, it's, uh, it's very vanilla. In fact, it's very beige. It's very... It's just, just a, quite a, it's just a dull film, is really all I can sort of sum it up as. Um, it's got this very bland, uninspiring colour palette. It's very sort of grey and drab. Um, and not interesting to look at. I mean, I found the first half an hour quite dull, quite boring. I mean, it starts off with a helicopter landing in this somewhere in the rainforest outside this cave where there are these um, very rare vampire bats. And we've got the character of Dr. Michael Morbius, who's an established... Um, name in the medical world and he's searching for the blood of these very rare vampire bats because he wants to cure this condition that he's got uh, this debilitating condition he can't walk very well it doesn't i don't think it specifies what the condition is but it's a, a condition a crippling condition that he has had then we have a flashback 20 years or so to young uh michael um in a in a home where he's been looked after with other children with a similar condition one of whom is Milo, who goes on to become Matt Smith later in the film. They form a close friendship. Ultimately, they sort of separated. Michael becomes, um, as I say, a medical genius, and he creates synthetic blood, which has cured lots of illnesses and diseases, but he still can't find the cure for the thing that ails him and Milo and many other people. So he thinks that this bat serum is going to give him uh, the answer, but it doesn't. It does something much worse. It turns him into a sort of a vampiric rage creature himself. Uh, Milo discovers this and he fancies a bit of that. He's still got the same condition. He takes it as well. And the pair of them, it does cure them, but it turns them into monsters, basically. And that's sort of the film. It's it's the battle between them. Morbius doesn't want to be a monster. Milo does. And it's the battle between them, uh, trying to come to terms with what they are and who they are. And ultimately, Morbius trying to stop Milo who just wants to be this killer, this bloodthirsty killer, a, a, a human vampire. Um, but it's just quite dreary. It's quite drab. And you, you realise watching a film like this, how good Marvel are and how Marvel have the magic touch. I mean, I'll be reviewing Moon Knight shortly. Uh, and that's an obscure character, possibly more obscure than Morbius. I don't know. Uh, but they sprinkle this dust over their things. And they make them light and funny and engaging and the characters you like the characters i don't like michael morbius didn't particularly like milo i didn't like any of the supporting characters they're all gray drab miserable people that i didn't really enjoy spending time with and this is the problem sony have got that they don't have a kevin feige who of course is marvel's director if you like or whatever you call him he's the one who runs the show and he knows exactly how these things should be he's he is the stan lee of the film world in the way the stan lee was the, the the curator of the comics, Kevin Feige, does that now with the characters on screen. And Sony haven't got a Kevin Feige. They just make these films, they throw mud at the wall and see what sticks. The two Venom films have stuck, particularly the first one. I have no idea why, because I detest them. Um, this isn't detestable in that way. This didn't irritate me in the way that those two do. It's Tom Hardy's performance and that stupid, growling Venom voice and the loud chaos of it. But this is just... Considering it's about, you know, blood-sucking creatures, it's fairly bloodless, but it's just not, it's not, it's just not interesting. It's just not an interesting film. Um, I think Jared Leto's clearly having a good time playing this part. I, mean, I, I don't really get the hate for Jared Leto. I've only seen him in a handful of things. I haven't seen the much criticised and much pilloried House of Gucci performance. Um, I've seen him as the Joker in Suicide Squad. He's one of those actors who's out there and does things, but probably wouldn't know him if I passed him in the street, and I might well have done. But he seems to be invested in this. He seems to give it his all. But he is acted off the screen, I have to say, by Matt Smith, the former Doctor Who, who is absolutely loving playing this part of Milo. He's reveling in it. And he lifts the script. He gives the words more oomph because of the way he performs them. And there are some scenes in a couple of the fight scenes where a lot of the fight scenes are sort of slow motion-ish. And there's a couple of scenes where the characters are captured fighting in midair and they sort of slow it almost to a stop. And it, to be fair, that looks like splash pages from a comic of Morbius and Milo in midair snarling at each other and thrashing at each other. Those scenes on their own look really good. Again, they'd be nice as posters. 
Uh, but the, the action scenes are quite drab. Most of them take place in the night. When Morbius, for example, has his powers, he when he, he discovers he can sort of sail across winds and things. And but the trouble is, whenever anybody, either of these characters moves, the colours, so there's this blur of colour. So Morbius has got this sort of, because he's dressed in this sort of reddish, purpley, there's this blur of colour that follows him. And same with Milo, there's a blur of colour after him. So it makes the characters indistinct and it makes the action indistinct. Um, Production-wise, I mean, it's set in New York, but clearly a lot of it was filmed in Manchester. Clearly, I think some of it was filmed in London. I mean, there's an underground tube station sequence, which just looks as if it was filmed in in a London tube. It doesn't look like a New York tube station, despite attempts to sort of put signs on the wall. It just looks like they're running up and down London escalators and fighting on London platforms. And there were some scenes, I, I remember it was filmed in Manchester, and I've been to Manchester a few times, and I recognise not the specific locations, but that sort of style of architecture. Uh, obviously, there are some scenes filmed in America. So it, it's a mongrel of a film in terms of where it was produced, and it's a mongrel of a film in terms of how it appears on screen. So I can't recommend it, sadly. I'm disappointed because I don't like a bad superhero film, and because I think that the general audience really doesn't know the difference between Marvel and Sony. This comes up and it's got an association with Marvel, so a lot of people think, oh, Marvel, I like Marvel. Spider-Man's great, I like Thor and the Avengers. And they're going to watch this and think, oh, Marvel have gone off the boil because this film's crap. But it isn't a Marvel film, and I, I you know... I sort of, I hope people do manage to understand the difference. It's hard because people go and see films because they want a good time. They don't want to follow the ins and outs of production deals and so on. But I think that bad superhero films give all superhero films a bad name, which is why it's a worry when you get the second Wonder Woman film and things like this and the Venom films that people, that, that gives people who don't like these films ammunition to make the point that there's too many of these things and they're crap because, yeah, some of them sometimes are. But they're not the Marvel ones, unfortunately. They are things that are made by studios who, who don't really know what they're doing. So that's Venom. Um, I can't recommend it particularly. Uh, if you're a purist, you might want to catch up with it eventually, but it's not really worth your money or your time. Um, Matt Smith, as I say, does elevate it. Oh, I must also mention Jared Harris, who's another of my favourite actors, who plays the sort of... Um, he's one of the lead doctors when they're Milo and... Michael are kids and he sort of appears in and out of the film sort of trying to help them out. I like him anyway, he's a great actor. So performances by him and Matt Smith elevate it, but Jared Leto's enthusiasm, but the script isn't up to it, the the look of it is dreary and the story's a bit flat. There are um, mid or post and mid credit sequences which are just silly and I think they're promising us things which we're never going to see. I won't reveal them here. Um, that's if they're in a Marvel film, you know, we'd be squirming in our seats. But with this, you go, yeah, yeah, come on. That's not going to happen, is it? So that's Morbius in cinemas now, if you must go and see it. But I'd wait till stream, you know, not bother at all, to be honest. It's a shame. It's a disappointment. Uh, I'm going to give Morbius, I'm going to give it three and a half out of ten, which is probably more than it deserves. Um, but I'm feeling generous. Right, there's Morbius out now. Have a look, if you must. Right, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. If you've enjoyed this, if you're new and you've just stumbled across this video, I thought that's all right. Click that subscribe button. That would be really nice because my subscriber total is just not shifting. Uh, and it would be nice to get a few more people on board. Even if you don't watch the videos, just click the subscribe. Won't do you any harm. You don't have to watch this stuff. Uh, but if you do, like, subscribe, leave a comment. I'll see you soon. Until I do, keep taking the stuff. <laughs>